Steve Burr here. Uh, welcome back to the home front, as I like to call it. Um, it's hay season here in Tennessee. It's time to cut. You know, you got these narrow little opportunities for the spring cut, the first cut, between rain and sun and rain and sun. It grows rapidly. And if you do like me and you travel for a living, you tend to be out of town when it's sunny and you're home when it's rainy. So it's kind of hard to find that perfect little window to get it while it's, while it's ready. And of course, if you live on a farm, especially a farm that's not blessed with all brand new equipment paid for by some government program, uh, everything happens at the most inconvenient time. So, since I was just getting ready to cut hay, you guessed it, a tractor broke. And we've got multiple tractors, so we could get by if we had to, but it definitely is more convenient to run the cutter on one, the rake on one, and then, you know, have the baler, the baler sitting, beside, sitting off on another tractor, ready to follow the rake um, when it's time to rake. So, anyway, what we the problem we had the other day, I was cutting a uh, mowing rather one of our grazing pastures that our sheep are in at the moment with a finished mower on the back of this John Deere. Um, and with the loader, I've taken the loader off this thing a few years ago and kind of haven't put it back on because I've kind of gotten you know used to not having a big long thing obstructing my view out there. So this is kind of my general purpose tractor now. I was uh, mowing that sheep pasture when all of a sudden. Smoke just started bellowing out uh, from underneath the hood and the, the lights came on on the dash to show me my alternator was offline and other such things. First thought was fire, you know, so I shut the fuel off and cut it, you know, shut everything down. Uh, it's an old school tractor, so it's a fuel shut off valve to actually shut the engine down. And uh, then I realized it was antifreeze, which is always a good thing. And thankfully it wasn't a radiator or anything expensive. What happened was a uh, a cooling line. It's a 30 year old tractor. It's a 92 model John Deere 2155. Um, it's only got 2700 hours on it so it's, it's a low time tractor. It spent most of its life uh, as a loader uh, and not a, f a farm tractor doing hay all day every day in the field. So the hours are kind of low on it for its age. But you do have, you know, shriveling up, dry rotting, hardening, you know, rubber component seals and stuff like that. And that's most of the stuff I'm facing with it right now. So anyway, the main cooling line that uh, comes off the water pump popped off and started dumping that nice slick antifreeze right down on all the belts and pulleys. Uh, the belt was probably a little looser than it needed to be so that that slick slickness added to that caused the belt to start to slip and the uh, main flywheel pulley just kind of cooked right through it and uh, burn it almost into I ended up cutting it to take it off um, and that doesn't sound like that big of a deal so you put the hose back on put the clamp on a little better that's easy right so put a fan belt on it what, what's so hard about that well I'll show you in just a minute my little dilemma with that but this tractor like many tractors and dozers and uh, other pieces of equipment on the flywheel on the front or your harmonic balancer on the front where your pulley is that turns your fan belt, that turns your fan, your water pump, your alternator. Um, on the front of that is a coupler that has a shaft that reaches underneath the radiator in the most inconvenient place to the hydraulic pump which operates all the hydraulics obviously for the loader, the three-point hitch, the remotes in the back and all that kind of stuff. So you can't just put a pulley or put a, a new belt around the pulley on the bottom you've got stuff in the way so if you look up what it takes to actually do that job it's about seven or eight hours of labor to pull everything off the front end to get to that hydraulic pump to disconnect the coupler so that you can feed your belt on and then put it all back on so with a lot of folks being broken down in the field still got work they need to do I found on some old tractor forums and equipment forums where folks were using a something called a link belt, which was originally designed for you know woodworking lathes and other such things where you also didn't have access to slide a belt just simply onto the pulley where components had to come apart and be pressed apart. Uh, so they somebody came up with this ingenious little thing that looks like a a big strawberry twizzler. Uh, and it's called a link belt. So with this link belt, it's exactly what it sounds like. There are a bunch of links 
individual little links so this belt can be taken apart and sized and put back together and since it can be taken apart you can fish it through that place you know in particular on this tractor where you can't just slip a, a one piece continuous belt on you can take it loose fish it through reconnect it and then tighten it with your alternator and you're back in business and this is a half inch uh taper v-belt you know you can you can look those little tabs at the bottom of the link those are, are shaped for the tapered side but this is a five footer uh this this tractor the belt that came off of it was about 51 inches long uh, my choices were 48 inches you know four feet or five feet so i went ahead and got the five feet or just figured footer just figured i'd put it on and remove the links i didn't need now let me show you in close-up detail exactly the the battle i'm facing and why i'm opting to give the link belt a try instead of spending an entire day or more because it's a 30 year old tractor not everything's going to come apart the way it's supposed to not everything's going to go back together the way it's supposed to so you always got to double your estimated time so anyway let me give you a, let me grab the camera and give you a close-up look of exactly what i'm dealing with here okay as you can see here i really need to clean my tractor but it works a lot it doesn't complain much and uh it keeps on doing the job so you know i'll deal with its leaks and it's a uh, it's little messiness here and there and it's uh, it's treating me well so anyway so here you can see where the belt wraps it comes down the flywheel around the bottom up over the pulley that turns the fan and drives the water pump across the alternator to keep the battery charged and back to that pulley now as you can see here in front of the pulley is that big coupler and that coupler run disappears underneath the radiator and pops out into the hydraulic pump up here so if you look in all the books on actually how to do this job and pull the hood off pull the radiator out pull all this stuff off to get to the hydraulic pump down there to disconnect the coupler on that end because if you disconnect it on this end you can't really get it out of the way because you can't move it so the coupler has to be disconnected disconnected on this end the belt slides across and goes back gets routed and then everything else goes on that is clearly not something i need to be messing with uh, the day before i cut hay so i'm going to go ahead and give that uh, link belt a quick shot we'll see how that works and uh, we'll show you the results here in just a minute Well, folks, there you have it. You just saw it running. Um, I had to I had to take five or six links off to get it to fit, and then it uh, was off, I couldn't quite get it adjusted out enough to get uh, to get the tension I was looking for. I didn't want to get it too tight. I wanted it to adequate to get the job done, but without putting too much stress on it. Um, so I took one more link out, and one thing I learned, you know, the tight the more links you take out, the harder it is to get those tabs manipulated in there the way you want them. But it, uh, it seems to be working for me. So, uh, so far, so good. One important little thing to note, this is the links that I, I took off in sizing. There was uh, one additional. This is the first chunk I took apart. As you can see how those little tabs are made. Um, and how they're sloped back in that direction. And you can see how those are the the shape for the V pulley. When you route these things, you want to make sure, see it would be this way in the pulley, right? So you want to make sure it's rotating in a way that naturally wants to go with uh, the locking force of those tabs. You know, you want it to, you want it to flow in the right direction so that it's not fighting itself. So. One little important tidbit to add. Well, folks, there you have it. Um, got it all back together and ran it for a few minutes. Got everything adjusted out. It's uh, it's looking good for what it is. It kind of looks crazy, you know. It's, it's like, like I said, a piece of Twizzler wrapped around your uh, your pulleys. But 
I'm gonna button it up now and I'll go back and uh, try to finish mowing that pasture because uh, here and it's supposed to rain uh, in the next for the next couple days so we're shooting for this Friday to cut hay so I'm gonna go mow with it so I can put some time on it to make sure it's really gonna hold up the last thing I want to do is uh, spend a lot of time uh, getting the uh, disc mower out and mounted up on the back of this thing only to get a few laps around the passer and have that belt come apart on me so I'm gonna go test it good and hard uh, with the mower if it holds together we'll plan on using this tractor uh, to cut with on hay day so I hope you got something out of this I couldn't find any YouTube videos on this subject um, I found a lot of older forums um, tractor forums, heavy equipment forums, and stuff like that where guys talked about it. But I didn't find any videos on it, so I thought I'd, I would share what I had found with you in case you encounter a similar situation. And you know, to be honest, it would be handy to uh, have one of these even in the toolbox of your truck, you know, because there's a lot of times just changing a fan belt on a pickup truck, it's kind of difficult to get it around the fan and everything, even though it's not impossible like this. But so for a quick roadside repair, you know, you basically think of it as the fancy pantyhose method. Um, I could see these things, you know, just have a few of them laying around in different toolboxes and such to save the day. Because if I'd have had this the day it broke on me, in 15 minutes, I could have had it, you know, back in action and I wouldn't have lost half a day's mowing. So, if you're like me and you're running older equipment, you know, it could be a good little investment for you. So, thanks again. Like and subscribe if you're getting anything out of this channel. Um, the more of us that share these kind of lessons learned... Uh, the more we'll all grow. So I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. God bless. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon.